Hey everybody, this is Sully from Five Freaking Onion Rings and it's been a day. But have you ever thought, I want to put a video on a wall or on a t-shirt, but I don't want to do the whole let's track things and let's go into Fusion Studio and let's, you know, set up a bunch of nodes and let's try some. Well, believe it or not, surface tracking in DaVinci 18 Beta 3 actually lets you do video now and it's really cool and uh yeah so we're going to show you how to do that today because i thought it was cool before you could do images and whatnot but to do video is really 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 cool so we're, we're going we're going we're going we're going to do that and i want to start first with a very simple track how to use surface mapping, which I have another video on. It's so easy. I love it. Of how to just put an image. And I have a nice JSON image here, if you want to see. Got a nice JSON image. I want to have it across my shirt. And this, I'm doing it in real time just because it's so fast and so easy. So go over to your color tab. And I'm doing this without Fusion. I don't like Fusion that much. I, I, I like Fusion, but not that much. But in your color tab, you're just going to go over to Effects, your library, do your surface track, drag it onto your timeline. Uh, that happened to connect. I've never had one connect that fast. That's funny. Uh, on your timeline, you just drag it in. Surface track again, bounds, mesh, track, and results. Makes it so easy. For bounds, just click it around where you want it to go. For me, it's through the nice difficult times cliff. And yeah, try to get it as good as you want. Now I use, when doing this, you just click mesh. It sets up a nice mesh. Since this has some high contrast areas, this should be very easy. Track, I don't really have too much to do. You can do motion range. You can do quality better if you want, but this is an easy track. So I, I've never had to use better. It always just tracks pretty well. This double arrow right here is forward and back. So since I started in the middle of the clip, it's going to go forward and then it's going to go backwards. Just going to drag your image down to create the mat. And and green goes to the bottom green and that will show the image just shows up there if you're still seeing the grid you have to click results my bad and if you don't see this outline here this is actually your overlay placement and when you click down on overlay positioning interactive canvas i normally use sliders but interactive canvas makes it so you can just drag everything apparently you can just drag it and it will put it on the right plane for you and this is very helpful when you're doing plane work where something might be off center or whatnot so you don't have to skew and rotate I don't use it that much that way, so I actually use sliders. But I did want to say on my last video, I could not find out why that plane disappears. Like it drives me crazy. If you have that problem, just click go to reference and that will pop you to the frame where you drew your original bounds and that gives you your reference area. Since I'm using sliders, again, positioning sliders, I like to just slide things around. It's, it's easier for me now. I've just gotten used to this but I want some eyeballs going over my shirt. Now, since I can't see my shirt, compositing is what allows you to do that. And you can drop opacity if you want to do something kind of cheesy. I don't like that as much as I like overlay or hard light or soft light. Uh, soft light looks good in this case. Screen, screen, that's the one I want. I want screen. Um, and it really is just a play around with this method. If you don't like how it looks, don't forget you do have these four boxes. Just link them in the matte box to the bottom. If you link to the top, it'll give you a weird matte mask so it kind of cuts out. There are uses for that. I just am not familiar with what they are. But in my case, um, these will do an alpha out. Let's reconnect this. This will do an alpha out and it'll give you different variations. And I know there are certain rules to what these boxes do again, but literally it's a play around and try and find out. So that gives you a very simple, when you rotate, that's that's the easiest way to use mask. And that's what most of these uh, tutorials give you. And whenever you go back and you play it, this looks like my shirt. I, I tried waving it, but it looks like my shirt's moving. It looks more like the clef, which is actually on the shirt, is more fake than what I added. So that 
that that's kind of cracks me up a little bit um <laughs> the shirt yeah that is funny and that's how most of surface tracks used is to put uh, an image on a shirt or on you know a face or whatever now what i found in the new version of resolve is that now you can do video clips on them all right so we're going to do surface track uh, let's find a good spot on this just drag it down it's the same process it's very simple drag it over i did learn a trick i wanted to show you this if you click in the lower left area of the box you'll see it turns gray that actually disables the box but there's nothing there. So I don't know if that's a bug or a feature of beta 18, but if you accidentally click in the lower left corner and then it takes, it's, there's a specific spot, it will disable your box. So if you wonder why your node turn, suddenly turned gray and stopped working, it's because you disabled it. Not something that is told, but definitely something you need to know if you don't know. So we're going to track here. Just draw your bounds, do your mesh. Gives me a good mesh. Give me a track forward and back the exact same process as before this takes a few because this is a longer clip we're going fast forward i will say that was amazing that it went off the screen and kept the track in the exact same spot it is so good that took a minute a couple minutes but uh, i don't know if you noticed i fast forwarded through it but when that went off the screen it still kept the same spot so i'm amazed that was a good track though and now once you get that take your clip that you want to overlay you're just going to drag it out it's going to create that external mat again go and link green to green you'll see it pop up and you'll link blue if you want to do an alpha mat in this case i don't do the alpha mats as much because they, they're too light quite honestly but again you have to experiment with what works for you so clicking back on the tracker go to the results it's the same thing where you can do interactive cameras and if you notice i don't have my canvas showing so if i click go to reference it should take me exactly to where i set my reference frame and from here i can drag my canvas and drag my lovely handsome self all the way down to the right area but if you notice i get like skewed and way off point and i'm on a different plane so it won't look right so that's why i do sliders a lot it keeps me close to what i need and from here just zoom a little bit out so you can see uh that's actually the wrong clip it's a different clip than what i had before but that's all right that's why we do this live sometimes let's do this clip and if you notice i can have two clips on the same timeline not a big deal just drag it up connect the other one that's a lovely face holy cow uh, it's a little closer so that's fine that's fine and see uh, right now it just looks like a harsh inset video this could be done in many different ways but what's the kicker for me is once you start doing the actual overlay uh, in this case i wanted to use hard hard light soft light hard light hard light so it looks like a, a thing looks okay but this looks too fancy for me or it looks too clinical so then scroll back up you get your softness you can soften it up a little bit you can expand it out a little bit make it a little round make it look like it's just painted on you can hide my thing so I can see what I'm really looking at and there you go see how easy that is that's pretty simple now part of the problem with this though is that you have no sound so for the video you have in when you go back into here this is treated like a clip like any other color grading so there's no sound and that's actually where the trick comes in here on what to do because there is no sound you have to basically go find your video and then drag the sound down and line it up straight and there you go. Hey everybody, people have been doing this stupid, uh, I say stupid, it's actually a really good effect of putting on little decals on shirts and how to, yeah. And that's a different video from before. So like I say, I do these things real live time just to show that sometimes things are weird. But hey everybody, the easiest way to do this is to make sure the video that you want to have inset is edited already and is something that is from beginning to end exactly what you want to have in. The problems creep up when you have like say you have a video and you only want to have a tiny part of that video showing but so to say i wanted to have from here i can't just set you know do like a set in set out and have that show up as my um have that just this little clip show up 
Like even if I drag this clip in, I know this clip now is only this tiny inset of the video, but I cannot go over to the wall. Let's go back into here. I have this tiny clip I just made and it's, it's a very tiny clip. I set it as an X mat. I can't just go over here, connect this and have it only show from the spot, can I? Well, let's see, I might be wrong. So I just dragged that over. It's the same thing. I'm just checking the sound here. This is what was happening to me before. And this is beta software. So shoot, if I can do this, this is great. So you see I have the tiny clip. I just want the sound come down here. Anything really. Yeah that you can track. And, I and see, it's just doing from the beginning of that clip, even though this clip that I used is a uh, clip that I used is just the little cutout piece. I would have to create a video that's exactly the part I want to use. So basically these mats, long story short, is these mats have to be the exact video you want to use or you won't get sound uh, or it's hard as heck to line sound up. So if you do use a longer video, have some clicking or something at the beginning so you can line up your sound because sound does not get embedded here so no matter what's visible in here just make sure that that overlaid video that you want to have inside is an edited full video that you are ready to do now admittedly one of the cool things about this is once you have this mat set in place you can add color nodes so if you can add nodes and you can modify and change what you want, you know, if you want brighter, you want darker, you can you can color grade that entire inset video just like it's a normal clip using a normal node. That's awesome to me. You can also uh, go back in, you can add effects. So if I wanted to do a zoom blur, I don't even know what a zoom blur is, but if I wanted to do it, I could do it here. And uh, yeah, it would do exactly what I want. So zoom in, zoom out, see it, it modifies in one case, uh, something that is useful, I have done, are scan lines. Scan lines, there it is. I'm looking for scan lines, good gracious. So yeah, if I do scan lines, say it'll pop up, I can do line frequency. I can make these small, like it's a television set. I can make them softer or darker. I can make them barely visible, something like that. Now this comes in handy if you're trying to mimic a TV set, you know, the normal stuff. But they, you can edit the mat just like you edit any other type of video using nodes in color, in the color tab. So it's really cool if you want to just have effects that you didn't have before. Anything and really the last, that you can uh, try. The last time I tried to do a, uh, the last time I tried to do overlay, you couldn't do video. Now you cannot do compound clips. So don't, don't try to, you know, get all fancy and do compound clips. If you want to do animated text, export the text as a video and you can do that. Uh, that's actually very easy. So that's how you can get motion graphics to actually surface map onto there. So that that's really cool. That's one of the happier things I've noticed. Now I'm not going to track this one through in real time, but I did want to show some extra things I did for this one. It's the very same process. I just did my normal box outline. I did my normal track, exactly what you said. Uh, I have this one set a little bit softer so it wouldn't come in. I also set uh, in compositing, I went all the way back and did uh, just a simple, uh, yeah, just a simple opacity change keyframe to make it look like it just pops into place whenever you open the paper. Very simple effect. Now this, I did something stupid on in that I actually used, uh oh, no details, ignore. Okay, just remember that, okay, so I can't use middle click on this. Um, this is beta software, so don't forget that. If it crashes, we will restart. But anyway, I used a piece of paper with writing on it, and I actually had some stuff on it that's personal information. So I added some power windows to this, power windows to block out my personal information, and then I used the object tracker to do the same thing, so it just tracked forward and backwards. Um, that, and that literally is all I did. And because I had power windows that did it, I added a box blur, blur, just dragged it onto the node, you know, create a new node, did my power windows, did my tracker, drag it onto the new node, and I'm able to blur this out. And it tracks perfectly well throughout the whole thing. So on this one video clip, I just have box blurs to make sure, you know, I'm not showing off anything I shouldn't be showing off. And then surface tracker, and then I have my mat in. And once again, because of that, I can simply go find my video of which I have no idea where this video is. Drag my audio down, and this one my audio should line up. I 
the invisible. Hey everybody, this is Sully from Five Free. Audio does not line up totally correctly, except it lines to the end, not the beginning. So that's that's the problem. Uh, so in this case, I have it cut so that. It hey everybody, this is Sully from Five Freaking Onion Rings, and and it'll line line up. Now your sound sometimes you might have to adjust it. This is beta software, so don't forget it. You just cannot get sound immediately when you do this overlay, this uh, internal internal video. Whatever you have as your your tracked video will not have sound, so make sure your audio is something you can line up. In my case, I make sure the video itself is edited well, so edited the way I want it. And then whenever I do the overlay, the tracking and all, the sound just has to drag down and it will be on the clip. Now, once everything is lined up, you can just highlight everything, right click, link clips, and you can treat this like any other clip. You can cut it to pieces, you can do whatever you want with these clips and they will do, and then they act just like normal clips. Like if they came out of the camera and you just did some color grading to it, they act the exact same way. And that is what I love about the Speaker. Because I don't like planar tracking in Fusion, which planar tracking in Fusion is, is easy to use, it's okay, it just takes me so long and I always end up something happening in that. So if I can stick to the color tab and the edit tab, that's exactly what I want. So that's how you do walls, that's how you do pieces of paper. I don't have tracking marks on there, but I use something with text to make tracking easier. You can use white paper, you can use whatever you want. You could even draw on a couple of dots. Just make sure there's enough for that that mesh to form. That mesh that's in here when you're on your surface tracker. As long as you have enough for mesh, you can track and you can overlay video. And as long as your video is edited, you can line up your sound exactly what you want and then treat it just like any other clip. And that will give you tons of options. And I hope it helps. Like I say, I'm just not as big on fusion, especially whenever I can stay in the color tab and make this work exceptionally well. I'm very happy. And with that, if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this interesting or if you found it useful. I know I'm sticking on Surface Tracker a lot and it's because I keep finding new features for just how to use it. It's so much better than what uh, I used to have to do for planar tracking and for trying to line things up to walls and make things morph. And it's, it's just so much, it's just so simple. I mean, like this, you know, it just, maps itself to the paper. It looks real enough to get by. It's a tool with many, many, many uses. But here we are. If you do have any questions, drop them in below and I'll work on it and try to find you some type of answer. And that's going to do it. Hope you all have a good one. Thanks again. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll talk to you later.